So now let me start explaining the code for enhanced dense net neural network model based on improved unit for rice leaf disease identification. So we will first consider this part of the code and we will break down the code step by step. So if we consider this, so these are import statements that bring in necessary libraries or modules. So at first we have NumPy that is for numerical computing. Then we have Pandas for data manipulation and analysis. Then we have OS for operating system related functions. Then we have matplotlib.pyplotplot for plotting graphs and charts. Then we have TensorFlow for building and training deep learning models. Then we shall consider these three statements where we import specific modules from the tensorflow.keras library. So at first we are importing two categorial that converts a class vector to binary class matrix. Then we import load underscore img that is used to that is a function that is used to load an image file. Then we consider img2 array that is used to convert a pil image instance to a numpy array. Then we have image data generator that generates batches of tensor image data with real time data authentication. Then at last if we consider these two lines, so they import the specific modules from the skikit learn library. So at first we have classification underscore report which computes and prints the classification report. Then we have log loss which is used to compute the logarithmic loss. Then we have accuracy score which is used to compute accuracy classification score and at last we have train test split that is used to split arrays or matrices into random train and test. Then peep install tensorflow is used to execute the tensorflow code. And then if we scroll down we have the directory where the path is getting directed to and if we go to the fourth part of the code the this uh, snippet iterates over all the files in the directory retrieves the name and stores them in a list that is called as name so if i uh, explain it in detail so what it does that uh, this line initializes an empty list called as name and this list will be used to store the names of the file in the directory then if we consider this for loop what it does that it starts a loop then iterates over each file in the directory that is specified by the variable that is directory the function that is os.list.dir and that is the, in the directory returns a list of files and directories in specified directory then we have name plus equal to file uh, within the loop each file name that is named as file is appended to the list that is the name and the plus and equal to operator is used to concatenate the new file name to the existing list then we are printing the name so after a loop completes this line prints the list that is name which now contains the name of all the files in the directory then we have print bracket uh, inside the bracket we have len of name so this line prints the length of the list in the name which corresponds to the number of files in the directory. So basically this part of the code gathers the names of all the files in a specified directory into a list that is in name and then prints out both the list of names and total number of files we found. So in this code we are performing three steps. That is first we are creating a map between the file name and indices. Second we are creating a normal and reverse mapping. And third we are defining a mapper function. So if I consider the first three lines. So this loop iterates over the indices from 0 to the length of the list that is the name. And for each index i it appends i to the list that is n. Then if I consider the normal mapping and reverse mapping. So normal mapping uh, creates dictionary where keys are file names that is the name and the values are corresponding indices that is this n and in case of reverse mapping so it creates a dictionary where the keys are indices that is n 
and the values are corresponding file names that is name this one and these mappings are created using zip function which combines the elements from two lists into pairs and then the dict that is used dict is used to convert the pairs into dictionaries and at last we are defining a mapper function so mapper function what it does it uh, takes a value as an index as input and returns the corresponding file name using the reverse mapping function a um, means dictionary for example let me tell you that if you pass 0 to this function it will return the file name corresponding to the index 0 in the name list so let me tell you the overall that how it goes on this uh, code so it creates map between the file names and indices allows uh, you as a user to easily map between both directions and provides a function mapper to retrieve the file name in the index and how can mappings be useful they can be useful for tasks where you need to refer to the files by indices or alternatively or vice versa so in this code what we are doing that we are iterating over the files within each directory that is specified by the name list which we have mentioned and then we are loading the images that are sometimes in jpg format or png format and then we are pre processing them and then organizing them and after organizing we are making them into two different sets that one is the data set and another is the test set so if you first see the first three lines we have data set equal to empty array test set equal to empty array and count equal to 0 so uh, basically data set and test set are initialized as empty lists uh, just to store image data along with the corresponding labels and count is just to keep track of the index of current class then we iterate over the directories and images in this code where the loop is iterating over each directory that is in the name list and then uh, t is there t is initialized with 0 to keep track of the number of images that are processed within each class then for processing the images we have this for loop uh, so what we are doing within the it has inner loop this is the inner loop so for each image file in the current directory uh, the code is checking whether the file extension that is in dot jpg uh, if so it uh, proceeds to load the image using the load underscore image dot load underscore image img that function and then it converts it to numpy array using img to array function this function and then normalizes the pixel values to 0 1 by dividing it by 255 then after that we are splitting into uh, train and test sets so we have code from here to here so each image along with its corresponding class label that is count is appended to either a data set or a test set based on the value of t what we have so if you encounter the first 60 images for each class added to training data set that is the test set and data set the value of t is incremented after each image is processed so at last uh, we have count equal to count plus 1 so after processing all the images in the directory count variable is incremented to move to the next class so here we are doing the data preparation so this part unpacks the data set and test set uh, lists of tuples into two separate lists that is data that is the training data and label 0 this one as class label and test as the testing data and t label as testing class label respectively using the zip in bracket underscore the iterable that is either test set or data set and in this part of the code what we are doing we have one encoding label that is labels 1 and here we are taking label s1 here we are taking t label s1 
so we are using two categorical function that is the function extracted from keras it is used to convert class labels into one hot encoded format that we are finding as labels s1 and t labels s1 then what we are doing we have data so then we are printing the length of the labels and printing the length of the t labels and then train x test x train y test y equal to train underscore test underscore split so here what we are doing we are using the function from skikit learn that is used to split the data between the data and labels and training in train x and train y and testing in test x and test y set these are two different sets and here 20% of the data is kept for testing and here we have the random state that is set for reproducibility before that what we are doing before that uh, during printing and all the one hot encoding of labels after that in the back end we are converting the data to numpy arrays how are we doing that here we are considering data equal to np dot array in bracket data so here the lists are converted into the numpy arrays then we have printing all the training and testing models and after that here we go to data augmentation and what we do in data augmentation we basically use image data generator so image data generator is created using various augmentation parameters like the horizontal and vertical flip rotation range zoom range width uh, and height shift range shear range and at last fill mode so then we are uh, loading the pre trained trained models so in this code we are loading the pre-trained models so this line is basically loading the pre-trained tensenet 2's not one model from the tensorflow or keras application using the configurations as input shape with parameters 100 103 and they are and we are then assigning the include underscore top to false which excludes the fully connected layers of pre-trained model then we are using weights that is as image net which is used to initialize the model with pre-trained weights on image net data set then at last we are using pooling uh, and assigning it with average that specifies the global average pooling as the pooling strategy then we are freezing the pre-trained layers by then the pre-trained model 3 dot trainable equal to false where means uh, this line freezes the pre-training layers of the model preventing them from being the updated version during training so in this part of the code we are defining the model architecture so at first we have input s3 which defines the input layer of the model using the input of pre-trained densenet 201 model then we have x3 which is used to add a dense layer with 128 units and relu activation function on the top of pre-trained models output then we have outputs 3 that is used to add the final output layer with 3 units that is assumed as a classification task with 3 different classes and softmax activation function and at last we are using model which is used to construct the final model using the tf.keras.model by specifying the input and output layers then in this part of the code we are compiling the models basically we are compiling the model using adam optimizer uh, that is used in categorical cross entropy loss function which is suitable for multi class uh, classification and accuracy and the metric to monitor during uh, training and after compiling the model we are training the model so in this part of the code we are training the model where we are first using model.fit which trains the model using the training data that was used previously that is train x and train y 
then we are going with data gen dot flow that is used to generate batches of augmented data on the fly using image data generator object data gen and it also helps in efficiently loading and augmenting data during training so at last we are doing the validation of data which is used for specifying the validation data that is test x and test y to evaluate the model's performance uh, on separate data set and at last we are assigning the epoch as 30 which is used to indicate the number of training epoches then next we come down to this source code which is used for model prediction and evaluation so at first we predict the model where we are using model.predict which is used to generate predictions on the test data that is test x then in the second line we are using np.aragmax that is used to return the indices of maximum values that is along a particular axis and this is used to find the predicted class labels that is PRED and ground truth class labels that is ground and these predictions and ground truth labels can be used for further evaluation uh, I can give you an example like computing accuracy generating classification results can be used by both bread and ground so in this part of the code we are defining approaches then we are plotting loss then we are settling the title and legend then we are displaying the plot so at first we are defining the approaches where the range goes from 0 to the length of get underscore loss and this provides the x-axis for plotting where each value represents an approach then in the uh, plotting loss we have the two lines that is for training loss and validation loss get loss is for training loss and validation loss is validation underscore loss and get loss is plotted in red validation loss is plotted in blue and first one has the label of loss of training data and second one as a label of loss of validation data then we are going with the setting title and ledger as it was for the previous one where we are setting the title of the plot to training versus validation lost and here we are going lock as zero for specifying the location that is automatically determined by matplotlib and at last we are displaying the plot so and in this graph it is showing a visual representation of training and validation loss over approaches that is uh, also allowing the assessment of model conversions and potential overfitting so in this type of code we are just loading the image converting the image into array and normalizing it we are expanding the dimensions for prediction so first of all we are loading the image in a specified path and the target size parameter resizes the image to a size of 100 cross 100 pixels then we are converting the image to array and normalizing it first we are converting it to array then we are normalizing it by dividing the image uh, divided by 255 then we are expanding the dimensions by prediction underscore image equal to np dot expand underscore dims where we have image and access as parameters the dimensions of the image array are expanded to match the input shape that is expected by the model and here we have assigned the access as zero just to add a batch uh, dimension so basically what the code does it uh, prepares the image for prediction converts to a numpy array format and applies normalization to it and the prediction image is just present there to fade into the model for making predictions.